Hello everybody, so this is topic 7 for the Edexcel AL Mathematics called Algebraic Methods. I'm not going to waste any time and I'm going to get right going here. So, first thing is a quick prior knowledge check. This is the stuff that you should know from uh, AL and hopefully you can remember what each of these means and how you can go about solving these. So the first one, number one, got 3x squared times 5x to the 5. Now the 3 and the 5 will multiply, so I get 15, and x squared times x to the 5, so I add the powers, I get x to the 7. Okay. Which is the answer for number one. Second one, not much more difficult. And this time 5 divided by 15 is a third. We have one third of x because taking away here y to the negative one. I right, get yeah. they've done it like that, but you still get the same answer, but they've done it slightly differently, okay? Because the negative power you can put it as a reciprocal, which I suppose you can do, it's just a little bit more messy doing it that way, okay? Then factorising these two quadratics, we should be able to factorise quadratics from GCSE, we get x minus 6 times x plus 4, and 3x minus 5 and x minus 4. I'm not going to go through how to do these because you should know them from previous topics. Then using long division, you have to use long division, if you use short division or your calculator, I won't give you the mark, so you should have 21949 and 1652. And then number 4. Find the equation of the lines that pass through these points. So A, you can do it on your calculator, and B, you get Y equals 1 minus 3X for number 1, and for part B, you get Y equals a half X minus 7. You can also multiply by 2 for that last one, and you can get yourself uh, 2Y is equal to X minus 14. That would also be fine. Or you could also have for the first one minus 3x plus 1. Both of those are allowed answers. But the way that they are written there is a more useful way. And number 5, complete the square. So completing the square, you take the half of the b, take a half of that, and you take away whatever it is squared and then solve it. We have x minus 1 squared minus 21. And for that bottom one there, you get 2 lots of x plus 1 squared plus 13. Again, if you don't know how to do these, you need to go back to the relevant topics. So I'll tell you what they all are before I move on. So number 1 was testing your indices knowledge. Number 2 is testing your quadratics knowledge. Number 3 is testing your GCSE mathematics knowledge. Number 4 is testing your coordinate geometry knowledge and your GCSE knowledge. And number 5 is also GCSE and L quadratic stuff. It should have done before you get to this point. So I'm going to move straight on. And we can carry on with the next part. So, part, the first part of the ALO maths is all about algebraic fractions. You've seen these at GCSE, this is nothing new to you. So you can simplify algebraic fractions by using division. Sometimes you need to look for common factors to each term. In this case, every term top and bottom contains an x. You can therefore cancel an x from each part. So looking at this one here, I can cancel one of the x's out from everywhere because x is a common factor. So I can divide, I can take one off, we get 7x cubed minus 12, minus 2x squared plus 6 over 1 because the x will just leave you with 1 when you cancel. You don't need to divide by a 1 here so you get uh, 7x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6 there and that is the final solution. Okay. Uh, so this equation has been put into brackets like so you can cancel out brackets which are on the top and the bottom. So these are common. And so we can divide by the 2x minus 1. So there you go. So I'm left with x plus 7 divided by 1. 
and again you don't need to divide by one here so x plus seven is also allowed here any of those that one or that one would be allowed but the bottom one is slightly nicer so sometimes you will have to factorize one of the equations first once this is done you can cancel out the brackets as we've just done so looking at this then we get x plus 3 over x squared plus 7x plus 12 which is why I said you need to go to factorising as a prior knowledge check because you need to how to factorise this quadratic before solving and it kind of gives you a hint because you know x plus 3 must be a factor for it to cancel so I've got x plus 3 and x plus 4 it will be if we have a look there we go so two numbers that multiply to give 12 and add to give 7 so 3 and 4 and you've kind of got a help on the top as well so those will go the x plus 3 and the x plus 3 will go and I'm left with 1 over x plus 12 and again that can't be cancelled any further so that is the final solution there okay here's another one then x squared plus 6x plus 5 and x squared plus 3x minus 10 so we want two numbers that multiply to give 5 and add to give 6 well if they add to give 6 and they multiply to give 5, well that's 5 and 1, isn't it? So we have x plus 5 and x plus 1, divided by x squared plus 3x minus 10. And we just factorise the bottom, so two numbers that multiply to give negative 10, but add to give uh, plus 3 here. So we want plus 5 minus 2. And we can see we've got plus 5 common on the top and the bottom, so we'll be left with x plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, which of course is our final solution. Okay, I've got another one here. I've got 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 over x plus 3 and x plus 4. So here the only difference is the coefficient of the x squared is now not, no longer 1 here. It's a little bit difficult, but it uses the same principle. So we want two numbers that multiply to give 12 and add to give 11 when 1 is doubled so we get 2x plus 3 and x plus 4 over x plus 3 x plus 4 and we can see the x plus 4s will cancel there so I'm left with 2x plus 3 over x plus 3 final solution next part of this video is all about polynomial division now there is a method in the exam that says you can use any method you want to get here to solve this problem there are two methods there is one method called long division which is in this powerpoint then i'm going to show you another method as another part to this video and that will be all using the grid method now i showed you the grid method in my further inequalities video which if you've not seen i'll link it in the description down below and it'll be also on my main channel page if you want to go and see that. So the, those are the methods that I'll be looking at here. So you can use algebraic long division to divide a, to divide a polynomial by x plus or minus p, where p is a constant. So a polynomial is a finite expression with positive and integer indices. So examples of polynomials could include uh, 2x plus 4, uh, 4xy squared plus 3x minus 9 be 100. Examples of non polynomials would include root x, 6x squared, and 4 over x. You need to be able to, to divide by polynomials, which can be used in factorization. First, though, we will look at numerical long division and what, this pr what the process actually means, first of all. So, Number one, divide 819 by seven. You can use short division. I will do short division on the left just to make sure that we will get the final answer. So short division, sevens into 81, or sevens into eight you can do. One, there's one left over. One, four left over, seven. So we should be getting 117 using long division. First, how many 700s in 800? We're left with 1. We now take away 1 times 700 from what we started with. 
So we're left with 119. So we've done 819 to the 700, left with 119. Second, how many 70s go into 119? Well, that's just one. We now take 1 times 70 from what we had. And we're left with 49. How many 7s go into 49? Obviously 7 go into that. And we get the same answer. So it's just a longer process. But it is still using division in order to solve this specific problem of divide of 819 by 7. We now take away 7 times 7 from what we have the 49. And we get 0. So we know there is no remainder left over. When we get 0 it means no remainder. Okay. So 7 divides into 819 exactly 117 times with no remainder. Here's another one, so 9746 by 9. Okay, so 9000 into 9000 should be 1. We take 9000 away from what we've got, so we're left with 746. 900 into 746 is none. And we take 0 away, we're left with 746. 90s into 746 it goes 8, and then we get 720 and we're left with 26. Okay. And we do 9s into 26, and which is 2, because we get 18, and another 9 will get you 27, which is 1 over what we want. Okay, so we take the 18 away, we get 8. And that is what left over we have. We've got 8 remainder. So it's 182 remainder 8. For that one. So we're now going to look at some algebraic examples. So this is now no, no longer with the numbers, if you will. So the question is, divide x cubed plus 2x squared minus 17x plus 6 by x minus 3. Okay, so, bus stop method. This is how we set it up. Okay, so I'm going to show you this method now, and hopefully we should be getting better and better as we do lots and lots of practice. Because again, with A-level math, you just need to practice. So the first thing was we divide x cubed by x, and we'll get x squared. Then, we do x squared times x minus 3. And we subtract that away. So we get x cubed minus 3x squared. Perform our subtraction and we bring the next term down. So we get 5x squared minus 17, minus 17x plus 6. That's the first bit. So next bit, 5x squared divided by the x. So we're only looking at the x. We get 5x. Okay. We then subtract 5x and x minus 3 from what we've got left over from this bit here. So expanding that out, I get 5x squared, take away 15x. Okay, so we should have that. I'm written on down on the PowerPoint. Yes, we do. And we're left with minus 2x plus 6. Minus 2x by x, and we get minus 2. And then we do minus 2x, minus 2, lots of x minus 3, so we get minus 2x, so minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6, so that's what we'll put underneath and we'll perform our subtraction, and we get left over with 0. So the answer is x squared plus 5x minus 2, and there is no remainder. So this means that x minus 3 is a factor of the original equation. So when we are factorising polynomials, we can use polynomial division in order to find the other two factors by actually factorising what we get left out.
Une carte. Therefore, x minus 3 times x squared plus 5x minus 2 will give you that very nice polynomial that we started with. So at this point, there's a pause in the video because we're now going to go into the whiteboard and we're going to do this using the grid method. So I'll see you when you get back from that. Okay, so this is the question. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 17x plus 6 divided by x minus 3. And we want to do this using the grid method. So this is the grid method, which is essentially a reverse multiplication grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick x minus 3 down the side, like so. And what I want will appear at the top. And what I've got is going to appear in the middle bit, like a multiplication grid. So how many x is going to x cubed? Well, I need to multiply by x squared to get that. x cubed times minus 3 is minus 3x squared. However, I don't want minus 3x squared, I want 2x squared. So how can these combine? Well, I need to add 5x squared, don't I? Like so. Which means up here, well, x is into 5x squared, I need to multiply by 5x. This can now be filled in down here. So I got 5x times minus 3, so I get minus 15x. I actually want minus 17x, so this bit here, I need to take away another 2x for these to combine to minus 17x. So x is into minus 2x, or minus 2, and minus 2 times minus 3 will give me the plus 6, which is what I want. So this solution is this top bit here. So we've got x squared plus 5x minus 2. And that's the answer to this problem with the grid method. Okay, so hopefully you've seen the grid method, and you might be thinking, okay, you can use whichever method you use. Now, again, for this example, I am going to use also the grid method for every example of polynomial long division that I do. I'll always be using the grid method and not the long division method. You pick the method you use. Long division is very archaic. It's a very archaic method. Um, it is recommended that you use your uh, the grid method, which I should have shown you at this part in the video, on the whiteboard. And you can see how you use the grid method compared to the long division. And you can pick, pick and choose whichever one you use. In the math schemes for Red Excel, as far as I know, uh, as long as you get to the answer, you will get the mark, okay? But you must show you're working to get to it, you can't just put it down, okay? Anyway, so, given that f of x is equal to 4x to the 4 minus 70x squared plus 4. Right, f of x in the form. f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, what's it? ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So this is cubic format here. This bit is cubic. So we need to find out what multiplies by 2x plus 1 to give the original equation. So we can use polynomial division to do it. So we need to divide by 2x plus 1. Follow the same processes as previously. You must include terms with a zero coefficient as well here. So we have 4x to the 4 plus 0x cubed minus 17x squared plus 0x plus 4. So these I like to call them as placeholders. Don't know, that's the way that I like to call them. And wherever I teach ALO math and I teach this content, I will always call them as placeholders. Similar to when you use place value, you have placeholders for things. Yeah. You can call these as placeholders when you do division. So we'll see that in a minute. So, don't want to zoom in there, apologize. Uh, so we can do the same method. Okay. So hopefully. If you've paused the video and had a go, you should have got the same answer as me. Okay, and you'll be ending up with that lovely cubic, which is circled in blue there. And I will highlight it as well. There you go. So that's the answer. And f of x is 2x plus 1, 2x cubed minus x squared plus minus 8x plus 4. Always finish the question.
I've seen students who do the lovely division, it's absolutely fantastic, but they forget to include the final part. And it's stupid because they lose the marks for it. But you must make sure that you finish the question off. Okay. Okay, so for this one, so this is using the group method, yeah? So, more grid method. My preference for polynomial division. Now, I've got a four, and then I jump straight to a two. So, like in the video you've just seen right now, that I recorded previously, I need some sort of placeholder. You can put them in, and I will do. So, I need a zero x cubed, and I need a zero x. I always put those in so I know what I'm doing before I actually create my grid. So, I'm going to create the grid. Very basic. So, what I want, so I want 4x to the 4, and I'm dividing by 2x and plus 1. Okay? So, I like that. So, I want 2x's into 4x to the 4. Well, what do I need to multiply here? I need to multiply by 2x cubed. 2x cubed times the 1 will get me to 2x cubed. However, I don't want 2x cubed, don't I? I want 0x cubed, so I need to take away that 2x cubed. So I'll get it to 0. So that means what must be up here must be a minus x squared. Do we agree? So we'll get a minus. Because those will combine to get my minus 2x cubed. So that means I get minus x squared. However, I don't want minus x squared, do I? I want minus 17x squared. I need to take away another 16x squared. So, how many do I want now? Well, I've got a 2x into minus 16x squared, which I get minus uh, 8. <laughs> Is that minus 8? Yeah, minus 8x. Like so. Which means here, I get minus 8x. Well, I don't want any x's at all, so I'm going to have to add on 8x. Like so. So if I add on that 8x, that will cancel those, and that's now gone. And now the final bit is how many 2x's go into 8x. Well, that's 4. 8x. 4 times 2x will make the 8x. And the 4 times the 1, which is the plus 4. Which is what we want in the question. So our final solution to this is the 2x plus 1. So f of x is now equal to this multiplied by 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 4. Precisely what we got using the grid method. Okay, using the other method of long division. Now, these methods are pretty similar, but this one is a hell of a lot easier, I think, than using the long, long division method. Because long division, again, is very archaic. So I won't recommend it, but it is worth using. By the way, if you're seeing this in the video all the time on the right hand side, so all of this stuff, that is integration using uh, by substitution, if you're wondering what it is. If you are doing this in order from year 12 to year 13 then you can just ignore this okay so you're just focusing on what I'm writing here in the blue okay and that is how we can do that do this question using the grid method find the remainder when 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 is divided by x minus 4 so we want to find the remainder here x minus 4 lots of 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 so, divide the 2x cubed by the x, get 2x squared. 2x squared times x minus 4, we get 2x cubed minus 8x squared. And we bring the next term down following our subtraction. And we do 3x squared by the x, and we get ourselves 3x. Then we do 3x lots of x minus 4, which is 3x squared, take 12, is it? 12x, yeah. So get minus 4x and I bring the next term down. You must, and this is necessary, you must bring that next term down that's left over. If you don't, you can cost yourself a mark easily. 
the minus 4x by the x, we get minus 4. And minus 4, lots of x minus 4, is minus 4x plus 16. And we end up with minus 6. Okay. So, and that is our remainder as well. Okay. Okay, so this question using the grid method then. Find the remainder when 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 is divided by x minus 4 using the grid method. I've pre drawn the grid because I know this video is getting to nearly an hour long. And I do apologise for that. Okay. So, I want 2x cubed. So I'm going to have to multiply by the 2x squared that goes up there. 2x squared times minus 4 will get me to minus 8x squared. I want minus 5x squared, so I'm going to have to add 3x squared on. And I'll get a plus 3x. And plus 3x times minus 4, so I get minus 12x. Means I have to take another 4x away. Get minus 4, minus 4 times minus 4 will get me plus 16. I don't want plus 16, I want plus 10. So I'm going to have to take off this minus 6. Which is my remainder. As you all know that this bit is not matching this bit up the top of my question. So this bit and this bit don't match. So to get from 16 to 10, I need to take 6 away, which is my remainder. Okay. So remainder is equal to minus 6. I always circle my remainder at the end whenever I do the grid method for polynomial division. And it's the method I will continue to use in any examples for upcoming videos. Okay because I don't use long division anymore. But do teach it anyway, just in case people like long division. If you like long division, then that's weird. And even I don't like long division, and I'm weird. So, there you go. So, this is an interesting algebra long division result. Want to rewrite x squared minus six x plus four over x plus one using algebraic long division. X plus one, lots of x squared minus six x plus four. So, this is basically what's going on here. This is the long division method for this one. We have x minus 7, remainder 11. You might think, okay, what the hell's going on here? Imagine writing the original division as an equation of a graph. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4 over x plus 1. Also, write the whole part of the quotient as an equation of a graph. y equals x minus 7. The quotient is this bit. This is your remainder. And you've got the divisor, which is the x plus 1. Okay? Okay, and it highlighted it there for you as well. So let's see what these look like on a set of axes, shall we? So I've put this into decimals, which is a graphing tool. You can also put it in autograph if you use that as well. So this is what we get. Now you can see from the curve, it is the oblique asymptote to the curve, x minus seven. And this is what we're using. So this is another one that we just did a minute ago, didn't we? Rewrite. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 divided by x, plus x minus 4. Okay. We did this one earlier on. Consider both graphs as before, as we just did. Okay. I take my quotient bit and I sketch the graph. And you might be thinking again, what is going on here? It is the parabolic asymptotes to the curve. If you don't know what these mean, these words, then you need to be finding these out. And you need to be covering the content before you watch this. Okay? Remember, the topic is algebraic methods. So this is topic 7 for Edexo. Basically, factor theorem and all that, which is coming next. Which, funnily enough, is right now. The factor theorem. So the factor theorem is... A way to find out the factors of any polynomial, and you'll see that right now. 
So, uh, the Factor Theorem is a quick way of finding simple linear factors of a polynomial. For example, factorize and solve the following. f squared minus 9x plus 20 equals 0. This is a piece of cake to a A-level student, and you can quite see that we get x equals 4 as a solution and x equals 5 as a solution, okay? Remember, you can put those in your calculator on the Casio Colossalist, the FX991EX, and you can quite easily do that, because they do have a quadratic solver. You can do that, no problem. So remember that what we are doing is finding the values that make the original equation equal 0. They're the important bits here. Okay. Another less reliable way to factorize is to try subbing in values, which is the way I don't recommend. But it works. If a value gives an answer zero, you, you then know one of the brackets. Okay. So for example, x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals zero. I can sub in one. I get one squared plus six out of one minus 16 equals zero. Why up minus nine equals zero. I can sub in 2 and so on. Because 2 gives an answer of 0, we know that one of the brackets must be x minus 2. And for example, for this example, it is. Okay. So the fact theorem states that if f of x is a polynomial, if f of p equals 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. If x minus p is a factor of f of x, then f of p equals 0. So, basically the opposite. <laughs> I.e., if f of 3 equals 0, then x minus 3 is a factor. If f of minus 1 is 0, then x plus 1 will be a factor. Because if you think about it, when you solve that, you get, x, you get minus 1 as your x value. Solve that, equals 0, you get 3. Okay? So basically, you change this sign to what's in here, in your bracket, okay? You can see, that's positive, that's negative, that's negative. This is negative, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. Okay. Hmm. I.e., if x minus 5 is a factor of f of x, then f of 5 equals 0. Or if f of x plus 4 is a factor of f of x, then f of minus 4 equals 0. So here's a question. Show that x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. So, part A, you can use algebraic division. And part B, and we use a factor theorem. So algebraic division, we've just done. I'm going to show you this method. Hopefully you've got the same answer as me when I did this, and we should be getting that. Get zero, so we've got no remainder. The remainder is zero, so x minus two is a factor. Nice and easy. Okay, and the final one for our long division, using the grid method, is show that x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 by part A, algebraic division. If it said long division, you'd have to do long division. But as it says algebraic division, it doesn't specify which one to use. Okay, so again, grid. Didn't bother drawing it this time around. x minus 2, what I want on the top will appear. Okay, that's my multiplication sign, because that's what's basically doing a reverse multiplication grid here. Let's cube into x, we'll get the x squared, so I can multiply, get minus 2x squared. I want x squared, so I'm left to add 3x squared on. I'm to add 3x, I get minus 6x, I need to add 2x. Those will combine, so I get plus 2. Plus 2 times minus 2 will give you the minus 4, which is what I want. So, my concluding statement says that as there is no remainder uh, x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4 x 
mana spore. Okay, and that is how we can do that using the glue method. And still get four marks for that question. Okay. Part B, you can use a factor theorem. So I can sub in x equals 2. We get 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 4. Lots of 2 minus 4. And I get equals 0. You can do that on your calculator. Try it. Pause the video, try it now on your calculator. See if you get 0. You should. If you get 0, you know you've done this correctly. Okay, I have 8 plus 4, which is 12. Take away 8, which is 4. Take away the 4, which is 0. You can't help it not be 0. Okay. The answer is 0, so x minus 2 is a factor. And you must have your concluding statement. Another question. Fully factorise 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9. And hence, sketch the graph of y equals 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9. So when I factorise this, I can find the roots where this graph is equal to 0. And then I can sketch it. So that is what the word hence means. You're using part A to find the answer to part B. Part A then. Sub in values of, of x to find a factor. So I can sub in x equals 1. No good. x equals 2. No good. 3. Yes. Okay. So you can do this by trial and error. And you can also use polynomial division. Or if you hop into your calculator you can solve this cubic be equal to zero and it will give you the solutions so you can find out what the bracket should be so we know that x minus 3 is a factor then using polynomial division we can find out what the other part is and we can fully factorize so this is what we get hopefully you're getting something similar to me if you did, that's great. And we know that 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 is the final part, the quotient bit. You'll see the word quotient a lot in mathematics. You'll see it in differentiation, which is a method in calculus, which you'll see in a bit. So you can also factorize a part of the quotient so two numbers that multiply to give three and add to give seven when, when one of them is doubled. And there we go, fully factorised. Sorry, I lied, there was one more, and it's this one's fully factorising, but as we know that x minus three is a factor, I'm not gonna go through why that is as it is. We now know what that is. Okay, so let's do this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put x minus three down the side as before. Doesn't change anything here. I get my 2x cubed as usual. I get 2x squared minus the 6x squared. Yes. Uh, so I need to add 7x squared on. I need to add 7x. Okay. And I get minus 21x. Minus 18x is what we need. So we need to add 3x on. I need to plus 3. And those moles by the th minus three and the three to get minus nine. Okay, so I get the x minus three times the two x squared plus seven x plus three, and you can two x plus one, and then the x plus three, I do believe. We'll get you to expand that, so I get 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Yeah. Okay, I can factorise those in my head. Okay. And that's how I can do that one, but using the grid method instead of long division. And that is actually it now. Okay, so back to me in the video. <laughs> okay. So part B, the roots at 3, minus 3, and minus a half. The y intercept at minus 9. Okay, so subbing in when x equals 0, I can find the y intercept. Okay, so I've plotted these. And as the coefficient of the cubic is positive, I know it will start in the bottom left. 
Okay, and I get a nicely drawn cubic. Okay. So, given that x plus 1 is a factor of 4x to the 4 minus 3x squared plus a, find the value of a. So here, if x plus 1 is a factor, then subbing minus 1 will make the equation equal to 0. We can find each part of the term, so we get 4 minus 3 plus a equals 0, we get 1 plus a equals 0, and then solving that linear equation to get a is equal to negative 1. So the next part of algebraic methods, that topic, is called mathematical proof in the textbook. So I have took that and put that into my slide here just to tell you that's my next part. And I think this is part four. So, so this is uh, exercise 7D, if you want to find it. In other words. So, moving on. So, a proof is a logical and structured argument to show that a mathematical statement is always true, or sometimes not true. So a proof will follow this general pattern. No facts and theorems, clearly shown logical steps, statement of proof, and you need to be able to prove mathematical statements clearly. One way is by deduction. So I prove that the product of two odd numbers is odd. Okay. So you demonstrate it and you prove it. You must show it is true. So this is logical, it's logical steps and you are telling the examiner what you are doing. In all of my slides and pretty much all of these videos that I have done, I am telling you what I am doing. I have to tell you that to get the mark. And it seems so stupid because you know how to do it, but the examiner don't know what you've done. So you need to show the examiner that you've clearly shown logical steps and that you have proven it right at the end as well with your concluding statement. So consequently, the products of two numbers is an odd number. Sometimes you might have to prove identities. An identity has a triple equal sign, and that means that both signs are equal for any value of x. Now, one person did this in A-level mathematics in an exam a couple of years ago, and they try to solve the equation. Please don't try to solve the equation. It's something that pecks my head and pecks my brain out. So please don't. And try to avoid it at all costs. But you must do not, this is important, highly important, don't go and solve it. Instead, start with one side and show it is equal to the other. So prove that 3x plus 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 7 is identical to that. Yeah, so that three lines means identical. So you start with the left and you expand. Which is equal to the right hand side. Now, I've not put it on here, so I'll explain it to you. At the end of a proof, put a square. Usually this means that you've ended the proof and we are at the answer that you were looking for. So make sure uh, that you put it equal to the right hand side, but it is nice to put that box as well. Okay. Prove that x, if x minus p is a factor of f of x, then f of p equals zero. So this is the factor them. Okay. So x minus p times another function g of x, we want to show what happens with f of p. So let x equal to p. If p minus p equals zero, then zero times g of p. So f of p equals zero. Okay. Prove that a, b, and c are the vertices of a right angle triangle. So you need to show that two of the lines are perpendicular, which will give you the right angle. You also need to show that the points are no collinear, i.e. they are all different lines. Yeah, so they can't be collinear, so any of these points 
must not be on the same line. If they are, you have uh, proved it the other way. So you've proved by contradiction, if you will. For example, if two lines have the same gradient, they could be the same line. We don't know, they could be, but we can't state it for certain. So here, here are my points. So the gradient of AB, so I'm using that, I'll get a 1. AC using the theorem from coordinate geometry, I get, man, I get a third. And BC, I get minus 1. So the gradient of AB times the gradient of BC is equal to negative 1, so they are perpendicular. Okay. All gradients uh, are different, so the lines are not collinear. Um, if they are not collinear, it must mean that uh, these are the vertices of a right angle triangle. And the equation kx squared plus 3kx plus 2 equals 0, where k is a constant, has no real roots. Prove that k such as the inequality 0 is less than or equal to k, which is less than 8 over 9. Now, this is a discriminant in disguise. I'd use the discriminant here. I don't know what I've put in here, but this is what I automatically go for. I find a, b, and c, and I will then basically solve the inequality. And I did do discriminant inequalities in my inequalities video, which was posted not long ago. So make sure you watch that before watching this. So remember to state with what relationships you are using, so it has no real roots. Therefore, I did go with a discriminant way. I said that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. It can't be equal to zero, because then it would have double roots. It would have a repeated root. So, I can sum in the values, and I can simplify, so I'll get 9k squared minus 8k is less than 0. Factorise that, so I'll get k lots of 9k minus 8 is less than 0. At this point, a sketch can help to show the answer. So 0, 8, 9, and we can put the equation of this curve. We want the part below the x-axis, therefore 0 is less than k, which is less than 8, 9. The bit below the x-axis, remember quadratic inequalities, we are looking for where is the graph below, okay, and that will be here, so in this region. So I have one single inequality, which is precisely what we were looking for up there. Okay. Be careful though, is the above inequality actually what we needed to prove? No. That was a trick. They're different. Based on the quadratic equation graph, k equals zero, would give us a root, and we therefore should not include it, since we are told the original equation has no real roots. What happens when we substitute zero into the equation? We get two equals zero. We do not get a root for k equals zero, and therefore it should be included in our answer. And we should have uh, k is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. But m must be less than eight ninths. And if you want to write it a bit nicer than eight ninths, which some of you might want to, it is not point eight recurring, if you want to know what that is. Okay. Not point eight 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 and so on. So the last part, final bit, is called methods of proof. Now specifically I want to look at exhaustion. Now, if you're exhausted, usually in general terms, then you are, you, you've had enough, you've tried everything, and you've had enough. So, exhaustion literally means trying all different possibilities of many values in order to prove something, which we'll look at here. So, the method of exhaustion involves breaking a situation down to smaller cases and proving each of them separately. So, this method is better when there are a limited number of cases. So prove that all square numbers are either a multiple of 4, or one more than a multiple of 4. A square number is generated by either multiplying an odd number by itself, or an even number by itself. Okay. So I can square the odd number. Hmm. Squared means the bracket times itself. When I multiply out, 
I get that lovely quadratic. I can factorise the 4. 4 lots of p squared plus p plus 1. So a square number generated from an odd number will always be one more than a multiple of 4. For even numbers, 2p squared. So we get 2p times 2p, which is 4p squared. That's right, is that 4? I forget 4 lots of p squared. So a square number generated from an even number will always be a multiple of 4. Since all integers are odd or even, the statement has been proved for all cases. Prove that the following statement is not true. The sum of two consecutive prime numbers is always even. You can prove a statement is not true by counterexample or disproving it. In that case, you find a single example where this statement doesn't work. So 2 plus 3 equals 5 would be the counterexample here. But there are also many, many more. Proof by counter is part of the A-level scheme, and which is why this question has been put in here. Okay. So, let's move on. Prove that for all positive values of x and y, x over y plus y over x is greater than or equal to 2. Remember that a proof like this needs to start from known facts, not from what you are proving itself. Sometimes you should do some jottings or workings first, and then write up the proof properly afterwards. I like to call them jottings, just bits at the side to see what is going on here. So, I can convert the fraction so the denominators are equal. I can multiply by the x, y together, which will mean the inequality sign will not flip because it is positive. To track the 2x, y away, I get equal to zero. This can be factorised. With lots of practice questions, help spots this kind of pattern. So we get x minus y all squared. We know the statement to be true since any value squared will be equal to or greater than zero. To do our proof, we should we should start from this null statement. So I actually labelled it proof this time. Okay, so this is the steps in reverse, in other words. And I get my lovely solution. We have therefore proved the statement starting from a known fact. Ideally very important. And that is algebraic methods. And hopefully, every time I have done polynomial division, I will have then followed it up with uh, the use of the grid method. So hopefully I've put those into this video, if you have watched it. If you liked it, make sure the, that you uh, press the like button, of course. And if you would like to see more from me on the AOL Mathematics Scheme for Edexcel and other examples, make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel, of course. And uh, I hopefully will see you in another video. Mathboy is now out of here. Thanks very much for joining me.